Welcome back everyone to the third and final part on mob creation for mine test. Now today we are looking at how to export and use the mod and its animation in your mine test mod. Now we're going to be using 10 plus one's mob API. We're going to be exporting this as a B3D. The B3D exporter does not ship with Blender. I will provide in the YouTube description a link for it because it was kind of hard to find until one of the MyTest guys decided to put it up on GitHub. So now it's not so hard to find. I will just call it dog B3D, though you know what? I will go ahead and remove the capital and make that a lowercase. We're just going to save that in this directory where I've been working so far. Um, you know what? Let's take a quick look at the options here. The only thing you really need to look at is select it only, and that way we're only getting the mesh. And we're not getting the lights, the cameras, this other mesh here that lets us know the size of the node. And we're actually going to have issues with this, but I intentionally did that so we can look at the issues and see how to fix them. We're going to go ahead and create a new folder, and we're just going to call this dog. It's going to be the name of the mod. Inside this folder, we are going to need textures. We're going to need a new folder for models we are going to need a few empty documents we're going to need depends.txt we are going to need init.lua we're going to need modconf we're going to need yes there's a lot of files you have to create we're going to need license.txt and we are going to need actually a screenshot, screenshot.png, screenshot.png um, is obviously a picture that we take, so I can't just create that as an empty file and make one. Um, so for the mod conf, which is short for configuration, all we need is name equals dog. That's all you need. Whatever the name of your mod is, you should put that into mod configuration as the name and the name of the mod. I actually have an, another copy of GI to open on another window, so let's hope this opens the right way. Of course it wouldn't. It's opening everything in the wrong window. The license. Model by Nathan S21. CC by SA. Code. I don't know what the license for the code is because I'm pretty much just copying and pasting using 10 plus one's API so I don't I don't know what you're to put as a code for that or for a license because it's an API you're using I don't know uh, the depends is gonna depend on well you know technically all it depends on is mobs but we'll go ahead and put default in as well it'll spawn from default blocks and it'll probably give us some de default blocks and then the in its lua this is where everything happens and like I said, I pretty much just copy me and paste. So there we go, copied and pasted. Now this is a goat that I made a model of. So we're going to be changing this. Um, let's see here. We are going to start by registering the mob, which will be dog. Dog. It is an animal. Passive. False. Passive should be true, shouldn't it? Tag type. Well, actually, no, because it will fight you back if you attack it. It does dogfight damage of two. Here's its health and armor. Collision box. We're going to put this to negative 0.5. And I hope I'm doing this right. Negative 0.5. Negative 0.5. And then these will all be positive 0.5. So the dog's collision box is going to be the size of one node. Um, the mesh we are going to call dog.b3t. Textures, well, the only texture I'm going to have is going to be, I don't even know what I called it. I think I just called it dog, which honestly is not a good name to use. I should at least do like dog underscore dog. That way, if I have another mod that uses a texture of a dog, I'm not going to get a conflict because there's two mods using the same texture space or the same name. Uh, let me just find. Ba, 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 ba. 
that should be right in here all right so let's open up the textures there we want to copy and paste the dog violent and i'm going to rename that dog underscore dog and then we're going to open up our models and we're going to copy and paste dog.b3d and you know, i'm going to do the same thing here dog underscore dog just a good idea to keep your namespaces all clean so everybody's mods can exist in peace and not fight with each other over which is the correct one to be using so we've got that fixed that's fixed uh yeah it's really not going to make a sheep sound but i don't have a dog bark so i will just actually remove this and you know i'll comment that out because i could always come back and add in some dog sounds um he tra drops raw meat that's fine damaged by water no a dog really shouldn't take damage from water and they can swim lava damage yeah anything that walks in lava is going to get burnt it's going to die follows wheat no how about we have it follow raw meat which it dropped here mobs colon meat underscore raw mobs whoops colon meat underscore raw is what it follows um it has an eating function here my dog really is not going to be eating anything so i'm just going to get rid of all of that obviously if you had a herbivore where it eats something you would put that in there but dog doesn't do that um it's going to be spawning and it's going to spawn dog underscore dog or uh, not dog underscore dog colon dog which is what the mod is called right there for this specific mob i guess and then dog colon dog here as well um now this is the egg so this is the string that you will get when you use the egg this is the name it'll have in your inventory and this will be the graphic picture that it uses which right now it's using default grass because i guess the goat mod doesn't have a picture of the goat um i don't have a picture of the dog so i'm just gonna use default dirt it'll work um this is all of our information about spawning so in uh, this mob will be spawned on default dirt with grass and ethereal green dirt top there is between 0 and 20 lighting it will spawn one in two thousandths of a chance it'll spawn and you get one goat in the area, I don't know how big exactly the area is, up to 31,000 nodes high, which is pretty high. That is all adjustable. All that information is actually in 10 plus 1's API.txt, I believe, which is only available in the mobs API. For some reason, it's not included in the mobs mod. I don't know. Okay, so that should be. Oh, wait, we didn't look at the animation here yet. Okay, so let's go back to blender and let us turn on the armature and say okay so this is his vicious attack 0 to 40 is his attack so we have a its punch start at 0 punch ends at 40 all right and then i think 50 is actually when the walk cycle starts Um, or no, walk cycle starts at 40. 40 to 90 is our walk cycle. So we'll reuse the walk cycle for walking and for running. Because, I mean, his legs wiggle back and forth. I don't know how much difference I can really make between a walking and a running. And somehow I accidentally am doing 82 here. I mean, theoretically, you could spend more time and make that happen, but I'm kind of limited on the amount of animation I can really uh, practically do when his legs are just boxes. All right, so that should be that. Let us go ahead and launch an instance of mind test here. All right, so let's launch this newly created mod up. Now, of course, we're going to make sure that we need 
we're going to need to make sure rather that we have the new mod enabled and because we are using 10 plus ones mobs api we're going to make sure mobs is enabled now i could use mob api but if you're making an animal come on let's just use mobs because it already has some animals so then we get even more and then we're going to want to make sure we have creative mode checked because otherwise you can't get the spawn eggs so we'll set play here and then i forgot to do unified inventory oh well i think it should work too yep now this is the the new creative screen that you will see in my test 0.4.14 which releases soon but is not released yet i'm running the daily so i see it now you should notice a, a teeny problem here like this dog is super small and he's like half underground so let's rectify both of those issues first one i knew was going to exist because i just was making some other models and so i knew that was wrong the feet need to be at the zero on the z axis here so right on this little green line is where they need to be placed make sure when you move it you are selecting the armature and the bones because otherwise if you do only one of them and then when you play your animation like yeah that kind of weird stuff happens so you want to make sure that you move both of them with each other so then we'll just go ahead and re-export this and you know actually let's let's make sure we have this the scale is all set to one right now too so we'll just re-export this as our b3d just overwriting the old one and then i'm gonna have to recopy that in so i'll just copy from here oops and go back into the models and paste that and then rename to dog underscore dog. So let's go ahead and load that back up. And now there's a weird thing. Oh wait, that's not worked. Okay, so we have our little doggy. He's so tiny. He should be bigger. Unfortunately, that is really easy to change. And now I don't know why it starts so small. Because that's already at a visual size of two and two. So I don't know if I'm just using completely wrong scales in Blender. But fortunately, it's easy to change. We just change our visual scale. We'll try 10. It's going to make the dog theoretically five times larger, which is probably going to be too big. You'll notice this guy hasn't changed because he's still spawned with the old settings. So here's our new dog. I mean, I guess depending on what kind of dog it is, that's really not too big. But I'm not looking for a dog that big. So let's tweak these down to, say, number seven. And that'll make our dog a little bit smaller. We're going to have to spawn a new one because, again, that guy's with the old settings. There we go. That's more like what I'm looking for. It's about the size of a node. It might still even be a little large, but, again, depending on what style of a dog, it would be totally different. Can you stop moving? Stop it! Stop moving! And he drops some raw meat. Let's pick that raw meat up. Let's put it in hand. What do you know? This dog is following me. Now I thought I could feed it to the dog. Oh, you punch with it to feed it to the dog. And then you kill the dog. Because I guess I overfed it. No, actually, he died because I punched him once, and I'm in creative. So let's go ahead and spawn a bunch of doggies. Hey, you little doggies. That's probably enough dogs, I think. Exit to the menu. Go uncheck creative mode, so we're into survival mode here. We got a bunch of dogs. Let's hold some meat. Let's watch all the dogs. Dog. All right. Okay, I punched him. Is he going to attack? Um, excuse me, dog. Try another one. Excuse me. Excuse me. Also, I don't know why I didn't lose that egg. Oh, because I haven't placed him. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, I 
guess we set something up wrong in the code. Let's take a quick peek at that here. Type is animal passive. False is not passive. It attacks with a dog fight. That should be right. Let me just take a quick peek. I may have something set wrong. I know that cows will attack you if you punch them. So let's take a look at the cow here. <coughs> passive fault, attack type, dog fight. Passive fault, attack type, dog type. Damage two. Um, what's his reach? He doesn't have a reach. That could be what the problem is. It needs to have a reach because that the reach defines how many spaces away from you or from the mob you can be and get attacked. So we'll give him a reach of two. That might be all we were missing. Wait, what? Expected something to close something. Did I forget a comma? I did. I did. Don't forget your commas, people. They are very important. All right. Where you at, dogs? Come on, attack me. I'm killing all your friends. But you're not gonna attack me. Really? Okay, I definitely have something wrong there. But I don't know what damage for. HP minimum, HP maximum, and armor. HP min, max, and armor. Reach and damage. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Punch, start, punch, end. Yup. I... I don't know. I will look into that some more. If I figure it out, I'll put the code on my website on this video. So... If I can figure it out. I don't know why that's not working. But that wraps it up, guys. Um, your big things should all have been covered. One quick little note. Let's jump back in Blender here. If you're looking at your textures and you're doing some low texture stuff and you're getting all smoothed edges, I don't think I went over this previously. What you need to do is go to User Preferences and then go to System and just make sure you have MIP Maps turned off. And you can kind of see it if you look. Let me zoom in here. With MIP maps turned on, it kind of blurs between the pixels. You turn it off and you get those jagged edges again. So, if you're having that problem, that's how you fix it. I just forgot to mention that when we did the Blender video. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.